Hey, thanks for clicking on my video. Seb Heslow here, and did you know that you can overclock your GPUs straight in T-Rex Miner? Well, I'm gonna show you how to do it in this video today, and I'm gonna also talk about why you would wanna do that. So stick around for that. So let's talk about why you would want to do your overclocks in a T-Rex Miner instead of in, for example, MSI Afterburner, right? So first of all, it's one less software to install, like you don't need to install MSI Afterburner or anything like that. Second of all, it's neater, you can just do everything in one software. But the third, and for me at least, the biggest reason is it actually prevents crashing quite a bit. And in one of the cases where one of your GPUs might crash, it is way more likely to recover and start up mining again. So in my experience at least, your rig is way less likely to go down and be offline for extended periods of times this way. So yeah, it just helps with overall stability for your rig basically. So let me show you guys a good example of what I mean with this. So I got my 12 GPU rig here, right? And that's using one of these, you know, one to four PCIe like splitter chips, right? And you know, those those are like they work. Don't get me wrong; they absolutely do work. They just make your rig a little bit more fragile, let's say. But check this out, guys. My rig, if you see here where it says WD, that's short for work duration, right? It has been working for six days and 18 hours straight. Now, if you see below there, you can see that GPU number one has crashed eight times and GPU number two has crashed two times. So that means I've had GPUs crash 10 times during these six days, but the miner has recovered each, each time it's recovered. So the GPU crashes, but the miner, T-Rex in this case, just restarts and recovers from it. And let me tell you, that is something that I did not experience when I was doing my overclocks in MSI Afterburner. Like, if my rig crashed, be it due to too high of a, you know, too high of an overclock or just because things crash sometimes, it would almost always mean I would have to come down and manually like reboot my whole rig. But now, it just restarts on its own in T-Rex and it's, it's amazing. Like, it's been going for almost for pretty much a full week without me having to come down and touch it at like even once. It's amazing. All right, so that is why you would want to overclock directly in T-Rex instead of in MSI Afterburner. Now, let's get into how to actually do it. Well, I'm gonna say one thing first, and that is that if you don't know what overclock settings to put for your cards, you're probably better off experimenting in MSI Afterburner and tweaking until you find those numbers. So if you're looking to like start overclocking and finding good numbers, that is what MSI Afterburner is still really good for. However, once you've found those numbers in MSI Afterburner, I recommend you can take those numbers and put them directly into T-Rex instead. All right, cool. All right, so as you've already seen, I've got T-Rex running on my rig here. And as you can also see, I have a total of 12 GPUs in this rig. And the first step that I recommend you do for overclocking in T-Rex is just to run T-Rex, first of all, and let it get to this point where it lists all of your GPUs in order. And you have all of the numbers out here, like see the number for each GPU. And either write that down uh, on a piece of paper so that you know the order of your GPUs within T-Rex or just take a picture of this with your phone or something just so that you have a reference of what order T-Rex lists your GPUs, okay? Because you need to put your overclocking numbers in in the same order as T-Rex lists them here. All right, so now before we even start, there's one thing we need to clear up and that is in order to overclock in T-Rex, you need to be able to run T-Rex as an administrator. And there are a few steps to this. Um, the first thing that you need to know is just how to run T-Rex as an administrator. And you do that by getting your batch file. Like I'm using the Ethereum uh, on Ethermine pool preset here. And you have to right click it 
and choose run as administrator, right? So that is the first step. However, that's not going to work right off the bat because there is one little adjustment you need to do within your batch file in order to get that to work. So to edit our batch file, we right click on it and hit edit. And it gives you this little piece of code here, right? So the very first thing that you need to do is in order to be able to run your T-Rex miner as an administrator, you need to put the full path to your T-Rex.exe file. And you find that by going into the same folder where you have your batch files, right? And you go down here, there it is. Do you see that? The T-Rex.exe file. So the easiest way I've found to find the file path for this is you just right click on it and you select properties brings up this little window here and then you just select this file path right click copy and then you can close this then go back to your open batch file here and right at the start here right click paste and then you just need to add one more backslash here like that now there is one more thing you might need to do which is to just put this whole thing in quotation marks like this and one at the beginning as well like that now that is only needed if you have spaces in any of the folder names here but you might as well do it just to be safe all right, so now to save this, you just click the X and hit save. So now if you go to this batch file again that we just edited and saved, right click, run as administrator. Now it should run as administrator. However, if this is your first time running the uh, miner at all, you might get a little pop up uh, saying oh Windows has blocked this file or something like that then you just need to click uh, show more info and hit run anyway or so, so, something along those lines um, also if you're running into issues where um, the file just won't open or you know may, like maybe your t-rex.exe file is disappearing that means it's being blocked by either your antivirus or your Windows Defender so you just need to go into them and make uh, an exception or an exclusion for your T-Rex Miner folder. So for this folder that your T-Rex Miner is in. All right. But of course, you know, edit your antivirus at your own risk. You know, I shouldn't have to say that. That like, Common sense, like you, you do all of this at your own risk, guys. All right. So now that we have all of that out of the way, we can finally start overclocking in T-Rex. And of course, we do that by right clicking on our batch file preset that we're gonna use so the ethereum on ether mine pool for me hitting edit again hey now so we we got our all our regular stuff here the path the t-rex that we just edited telling it what algorithm then we got the um, address and port to our you know pool server Got our wallet address, no password, rig name is called rig01. Then I've added in the overclocking commands here. So as you can see, first of all, we got the MT, short for memory tweak. We got PL, short for power limit. We got fan, that controls the fan speeds of our cards. We got the lock core clock. We got regular core clock. We got memory clock and we got intensity. Right, so let, let's just do these in the order I've put them here, right? So first of all, we got NT, short for memory tweak. You only need this if you have Pascal GPUs with GDDR5 or GDDR5X memory type. So it only really works for GTX 1080s, GTX 1080 Ti's, and to a lesser extent, it also works on GTX 1060s with six gigabyte memories 
I've also heard of some people um, getting it to work with uh, GTX 1070s. It has no effect on my GTX 1070s, but hey, I sh at least, you know, now you know. It, it works for some people. All right, but before we get into any of that, I want to just show you how to enter numbers into these commands, right? So, so let's just use memory tweak as an example for this. So let's say um, if you just have one GPU, it's very simple. You just put the number that you want to put in for that GPU, right? So let's say two. And that just means your one GPU will get the memory tweak number two, right? Now, let's say you have three GPUs, but they are all the same GPU and you want all the same memory tweak on them. Now, what you could do is you could type two comma two comma two, but since you want two, like memory tweak two on all of them, you could also just put just two like this and it would apply two to all your three GPUs. Now, let's say you have three different GPUs and you want to put different memory tweaks on them. You put one, comma, two, comma, one, for example. And this is where that list of like what order your GPUs are within T-Rex comes into play. So you have to look at that list and see in what order your GPUs are within T-Rex. And that is the order you need to put these numbers. Yeah, so does that make sense? Like. The first one in the list in T-Rex will get the first number here. The second one will get the second number. The third one will get the third number, right? But now let's say I have three GPUs, but I just want to add memory tweak to the third one. Well, then I use zero. So zero means either just skip or default value, right? So if I want to add memory tweak just to the third GPU, I just put 0, 0, 2, for example, if I want to add memory tweak 2. Right, so that is how we add these numbers in, and that is how we allocate the numbers to the desired, like, specific GPUs, and also how to skip certain GPUs by adding a 0. Okay, so now let's talk more about what to put on the memory tweak. So, if you have one of those GPUs I mentioned that the memory tweak works for, what you need to do is just start by putting one so let's say i have a gpu like let's say my first gpu is a 1080 and then i have just other gpus like let's say i have two other gpus like two 3080s after i would put one zero zero like this and then i would just save this batch file and run it i would see if that's stable and if it is i would go back I would change this to 2, save it, run, see if that's stable, and I would keep going until either my GPU becomes unstable or I reach the number 6, because 6 is max. So let's say I can bring my 1080 all the way up to 6, and then I have two 3080s. Then I would put it in like this. Okay, cool. Now, let's move on to power limit. Power limit is just percentage of TDP. So TDP is like the, um, the listed power draw of a GPU. But of course, with mining, we want them to pull less energy. But there's also like a limit to where it, you make it pull less energy, the hash rate goes down, right? But you just put this as a percentage. So let's say, for example, my 1080, I want to give that 80% power. Then my two 3080s, I want to give them 70% power. I just put 80, 70, 70, like this, okay? So that is how you put power limits. Now, fan is really interesting because fan, you can either set fan speed as a percentage and you do that the same way as you do power limit, just 80, 70, oops, not 700, 70, right? If you wanna do a fan percentage. However, you can also do fan 
as a target temperature which means you decide a temperature you want your GPU to be and if the temperature goes above that temperature the fan will speed up and if it goes below that temperature your fan will speed down it's very handy and very cool it's kind of like the fan curve in MSI Afterburner just kind of simpler because you just put a temperature you want your GPU to be and then T-Rex just sorts out the fan speed depending on that temperature and the way you do that is let's say I want all of my GPUs to have a temperature of 55 degrees Celsius right I just put T comma 55 now let's say I want my first GPU to be at the temperature of 55 I want my second GPU to be at the temperature of 45 and I want my last GPU to just have the fan speed of 80% well I can easily do that by just doing comma T 45 comma 80 now T-Rex will set fan speed automatically for my first two GPUs to target temperature 55 for the first one target temperature 45 degrees for the second one and will just set a steady fan speed of 80% fan speed on my third GPU pretty neat huh? alright so now let's move into actual overclocking right and there are two clocks that you can you know tweak on your GPUs so you have your core clock and your memory clock now there's only one way to change your memory clock and that is with the M clock string however with core clock we can either lock our core clock or set it as a core clock offset with a regular core clock string so the lock core clock feature I already have a video on exactly how that works and you can see the link for that in the description however it is not supported on all GPUs now I, I believe it is only supported on 20 series cards 30 series cards and 16 series cards so actually specifically 1660 series cards so the 1660 the 1660 Ti and the 1660 Super um, as well as 20 and 30 series cards so for them you can set the absolute core clock and they have a video as I said that goes more into exact detail on how to do that and for other GPUs like 10 series GPUs and so on uh, you need to set the core clock as an offset instead so how do you juggle both of these well if my first GPU is a 1080 I need to put a zero to skip that for this feature the lock core clock feature and then for my two 3080s I would set my locked core clock to a thousand fifty and for my third card which is also a 3080 I would again put a thousand fifty okay so to summarize that we've skipped the lock core clock function for our 1080 which is the first card and then for our two 3080s we've locked our core clock to 1050 now we we'll still need to set a core clock for our 1080 so we have to do that with the regular core clock which is an offset so you need to find what that offset should be so maybe for a 1080 it's something like plus 100 off of the stock core clock so we would do that by just putting 100 and then of course we want to skip this feature for our two 3080s and we do that by just typing 0 and 0 cool okay so now we're moving on to memory clock and memory clock works just the way it works in MSI Afterburner you just copy the same number you would have there and put that here so if we keep going with our example of one 1080 and two 3080s I would just put I don't know like like I have no idea th th these are just guesses for numbers these are absolutely not the numbers you should put for a 1080 and two 3080s but let's just say that on a 1080 you want to put I don't know plus 850 on the memory clock and on your 3080s you want to put a thousand on 
the first one and maybe the second one is a little bit stronger so you can put 1100 on that one and that's that's how we would do that okay but then again um, like I said earlier if, if you want to put the same memory clock on all three like let's say you want to put 850 on all three you could do that by typing 850 comma 850 comma 850 or you could just type 850 once and it will apply 850 to all of your GPUs. Now, finally, we have this feature, which is intensity, which as it sounds, just sets the intensity of the whole thing, you know? And this can be a number between zero and 25. Basically, in impracticality, what this means is how laggy will your computer be while the miner is running? <laughs> that, that is that is basically it but so if this is a rig where you've got very stable overclocks and a very stable rig in general um, I see no real reason for why you couldn't put this at 25 um, of course not if you were planning on using the rig for doing other computer things on it while you're mining but I mean I, that's I don't know if I'd recommend necessarily mining on a computer that would you would use for other things anyway, but that's 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 a different video in all on itself. Um, but the um, the default value here is 22, um, but you can put that up to 25, and you could even put individual numbers for individual GPUs, just like we have here. Um, for me, on this specific rig. Um, since it's not the most stable rig in the world, like I showed you in the beginning of the video, it has crashed 10 times in the last week, uh, but it has been able to recover each time. Um, I just keep it at the default of 22. However, on my other rig, which is a 13x1660 Super rig, um, it is extremely stable. I have actually put the intensity at 25, and that did give me another three or four mega hash total on that uh, rig. And it's been going steady on intensity 25. So that is your call. But if you just want to stick with the default of 22, you don't even need to type this out. You could just get rid of it like this. But if you do want to specify it, but if you do want to specify it, you do that by just putting a number of your intensity like 25 or if you want to put an individual number for each GPU, you do that by separating them with commas, like so. And that is how we set the intensity. So I just thought I should show you what the overclock like strings look like on this rig for me. So you can see here, I've got the memory tweak and I got zero to like skip it for most of my GPUs. However, I have two in the middle there that is that are set to six and one at the end set to six and that is because i have a 1080 a 1080 ti and a 1060 in this rig so that is why i set those numbers to six and the rest of zero after that we have power limit set as a percentage and you can see i have different power limits on all of my gpus here and i separate them all with commas like this i have set most of my fan speeds to 80 on this rig now during summer however three of them i've set to 100 percent because they tend to overheat a little bit and one of them um, is at 85 percent fan speed i haven't set a single one of them to a like target temperature but that is something that i might do instead of this actually and then you can see here i've put a locked core clock on six of my cards, which are the first six cards in the rig. Those are all 16 series cards. So first I have my 1660 Ti with a locked core clock at 850. Then I have four 1660 Supers locked at 1050. And then finally a regular 1660 locked at 1300. And then the remaining six GPUs I've skipped because they do not support the lock core clock feature. They are all 10 series cards. And then of course, the regular core clock feature looks the exact opposite. In there, I instead skip 
all of the first six cards and then I've put individual core clock offset numbers for the remaining six 10 series cards. And then finally there is the memory clock which is also an offset and here you can see just the different numbers I've put for the different cards and yes I do have a card here which is my 1080 Ti that actually needs a negative memory clock to reach full hash rate. It is strange, I know. It is just like some 1660 supers that also need a negative memory clock to reach max hash rate. It's just what it is. I know that can look confusing and look like I've put the core clock offset in the memory clock, but no, that is, that is what I want my memory clock to be. All right, cool. All right, so that is why and how to overclock in T-Rex Minor. Uh, and if this video has been helpful to you, then please give it one of these. I'd really appreciate it. What you gotta do now is click on one of the videos on the screen, because this video is over. You can also click the picture of my face to subscribe to the channel. I'd really appreciate that. But yeah, go click on that next video, and I'll see you there. Goodbye. Bye, 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 bye.